We're raising the walls on our project house while lowering the chance for bugs, termites, and mold. Hello, I'm Michael Holligan. Let's get started on your new house. Now that the raised floor foundation is in place on our country retreat project house, it's time to begin framing. The crew begins by assembling the elements of exterior walls on the ground. All of the lumber we're using in framing this house is southern pine, which is one of the strongest and most durable American softwoods. Melissa Miranda of the Southern Pine Council advises on the use of southern pine lumber on the project. Not only is it very strong, but it's a very dense material. And when you have dense wood, you have less tendency for things like nail popping to occur. So builders love to work with it. Uh, if you reduce the drywall nail pops, you reduce a lot of problems that the builders have to contend with during the framing process. The exterior studs are 2x6 solid sewn studs from Temple Inland. These studs have a very distinctive color. The reason for that is because there's a dye that's applied. Uh, that dye indicates that they are provided by Temple Inland. It differentiates their product from other products that are out on the market. But not only that, it provides an exterior protection during the framing. Uh, they are end waxed, which also provides additional protection from moisture being absorbed by the studs. The wood for the other parts that make up the frame are also southern pine, provided by Weyerhaeuser. It's important to use a strong species of wood for these structural elements, like the top and bottom plates that hold the studs together, and the headers that provide support above the windows and doors. Another application for southern pine in this project was the bracing that you see in between the studs. When we say bracing, we're talking about the smaller pieces of lumber that are in between the members. Uh, it offers lateral support uh, between those lumber members, but not only that, it also offers additional fire protection. When the wall panel is fully assembled, the crew raises the wall and sets it in place. The framers repeat the same process as they assemble the other exterior and interior walls and lift them into place. For the interior of the house, we decided to go with 2 by 4 finger-jointed studs that were provided by Georgia Pacific. Finger-jointed studs look like ordinary dimensional lumber, but they're actually smaller pieces that in the past would have been considered waste. By adding a joint that looks like fingers in the end, they can take these smaller pieces and then glue and press them together. What you end up with is a stud that is very, very straight, and it normally won't warp or crack because the pieces are shorter. Longer pieces of wood can warp shorter pieces don't. Plus it's very strong at the joints. That actually makes it one of the strongest places along the stud so it will last a lifetime. And being environmentally friendly, it's a good material to use inside your home. To check for quality, always look for the grade mark on a southern pine stud. When I look at this one, the first thing I see is that it's a number two grade stud. That's a really strong stud. It's perfect for residential construction. That's what we wanted to use in the project house. I can also see who the manufacturer is because there's a GP logo. That's Georgia Pacific. Plus, I see the KD-19. That means the inspector certified that it was dried in a kiln to where it has 19% or less moisture content. That means it's not going to mold or decay. Plus, the stud is very resistant to termites and some people don't think about moisture content with lumber but it is very important because you want the, the lumber to be dry especially when framing with it. Uh, for southern pine we call for a maximum moisture content of 19 percent for the lumber. For more information on framing your new house with southern pine lumber for superior strength and nail holding ability visit the Southern Pine Council's website at southernpine.com.